unicorn, which you can also keep as just a horse, and I'll show you kind of both ways in the sketch, and then that way you can kind of paint it um, the way that you want. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by thinking about my space. And if I'm doing a horse, I'm not nearly as worried about how high I go and kind of off to the side and everything because I don't have to worry about the unicorn horn. But if I'm doing a unicorn, then I wanna go a little bit lower and kind of kind of be centered, but a little bit off to the left. So what I'm gonna do first is what's easier for me when I when I draw things like this is I like to use my circles to get my, my face together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by drawing a circle, which is the main part of my unicorn's head, okay? So the first thing I've got here is I've got the head. So the next part I'm gonna draw is I'm gonna draw where his nose and his mouth go. So it's gonna be a, another circle that attaches to it, but a little bit smaller, not too small. We don't want it to be real tiny, but, and depending on where you put it will depend on if he's looking up, if he's looking down. So I'm gonna put it a little bit lower, but not too low. And so I've got that circle now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda look at it and I might wanna make it even a little bit bigger. I'm gonna turn my canvas to make it a little bit easier on myself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, right here, I'm going to in, indent it a little bit. It's going to be like a smile. And it's going to connect those two circles. And then down here, I'm going to do kind of like a frown. So you want to make sure that you're going the right way. And that's going to be important. And that's what connects that all together. And then... Right away, you can go ahead and you can erase the lines in the center. And again, you don't wanna let those eraser pieces fall into your paint. So you wanna be careful with that. So we've got the main part of her head. Then what I'm gonna do is right about here, I'm gonna come in for her neck, and then I'm gonna bump out just a little bit. It's like the top of the chest. So it just kind of hooks around here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come down here again for the back part of the neck. And we've got right here. So you can see this is where the body is, this is where the neck is, and here's the head and into the mouth. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna add an ear. So it's gonna be kinda of like this shape here. And notice I'm in the circle. I'm not right at the top of the circle. I'm in the circle. This line's a little bit shorter than this line. On this side of the head, I'm gonna do another ear like that and then you can decide what kind of eye you want to do and I am going to do kind of like a closed eye here so I think it's fun but if you want you can do an opened eye and you can do like an almond shape with the circle on the inside but I'm going to do a closed eye just because mine's going to end up a unicorn and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and give a little nostril. And down here is going to be her mouth. We're going to keep it pretty simple here. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to start working on the mane. So I'm going to go in between the ears. That's going to be really important. We want to go in between the ears. So you're only going to see part of this ear now. And I can erase. Not the line where the head is just yet, but those ears, the ear line for that back ear, because you're not going to be able to see that. You're only seeing this part of the ear now. So I've got this line, and then I can come through 
And you can do kind of whatever you want here with the little bang we got going. And then we can erase any of the lines on the inside. And then what's going to happen is you can come back here, it's just this little corner here, and then kind of come down and you're going to be able to do whatever you want to do with that mane. And it can kind of come down here and fall a little bit more. You can make it swoop in the front, whatever, whatever you like. But what I'm going to do is if I have it come down here like that, I'm going to erase where that neck is so we can see. So right now we've got a pretty good horse. I can erase this line as well. And to make it a unicorn, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a curved line right about here in the main because the, the main would be going, the bangs of the main would be going kind of around the horn. And then I'm going to decide how long I want that horn to be. So kind of like that. And then I want to decide if I want to kind of decorate it in any cool way. So first I'm going to erase the mane because again, you wouldn't see this back line of the mane. You would only see the horn. And then what I want to do is I like to kind of round the edges and make that kind of diagonal line. So I round each edge and then I come down around and you don't have to do this. This is just something that I like to do. But it just kind of fancies up that horn just a smidge. We keep going around until we get to the very top, just like that. And now we can go ahead and paint. So if I'm doing this unicorn here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint my background first. And so I've decided that I'm going to do purple. So I'm going to mix some red and some blue. If you want to do green, you're going to mix blue and yellow. If you want to do pink, you're going to mix red and white. So you're going to decide what color you want to do. Now this is a really, really dark purple which I'm okay with, but I think I want to lighten it up a lot. So what I'm going to do is once I get my purple here that I like, I'm going to go ahead, after I've mixed it on the plate here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dip into my white and I'm going to lighten it. And you don't have to do that, but that's just kind of what I wanted to do. Now I'm not going to worry about it being a perfectly solid color. I like having some of the dark and some of the light in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and just fill this in. So I'm using my biggest brush and I'm just going ahead and filling this right in. Now as I go and I fill all of this in, I am going to want to be aware of where I hold my canvas because I don't want a big handprint in my paint. But if it happens, don't panic. It's absolutely okay. I do it all the time. So what you want to do if that happens is first you want to wash off your hand. Then you want to look at where you put your hand in the paint and you just want to make sure there's no marks. Let's say I put one right here. I'm going to look and I'm going to kind of angle it to see if I had a print and then I'm just going to spread that paint around again. And when I go up to the line, I'm going to kind of turn my brush on an angle and that's going to help me get a nice smooth line. So I'm taking my time, I'm not rushing.
and as you're getting up to the mane and the ears and all that good stuff, turn your brush sideways, take your time, don't rush. And if you need to get a smaller brush, you can absolutely get a smaller brush. But you just want to use the big brush for those big spaces. Like that. So we've got that whole background painted. So what I'm going to do is I am going to rinse out this brush. To rinse it out, I'm going to tap it around on the bottom of my cup. That's going to get the majority of that color out. If I just swirl it around, it's going to get some of that color out, but not all of it. So I'm going to tap it around on the bottom of my brush or on the bottom of my cup. And then I'm going to wipe it on the sides. That's going to take all that extra water out. And then I'm going to squeeze it nice and dry. And that's what's going to give us a nice clean brush. If you still see that you've got a lot of color on your brush, you want to go ahead and don't be afraid to do it again. Okay. Now no matter if you're making the horse or if you're making the unicorn, no matter what you're doing, you can choose whatever color you want for the body and whatever color you want for the mane. Um, when you're thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do white. And so I'm going to fill in my unicorn white. Now if I wanted to make it a horse and I didn't want a white horse, let's say I wanted a brown horse, I would go ahead and I would mix a brown. And in order to do that, I would need to mix yellow and blue together and make myself a green. So first you mix yellow and blue, and then once you get a green, then you're going to mix some red into it. And when you mix the red into it, that's what's going to make it brown. If you want to make it a darker brown, you can go ahead and use a little bit of black, but you don't want to use too much because black will go a very, very long way. And if you want to lighten it, you can use a little bit of white. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I'm going to fill this whole part in. If you're not sure where you've painted when you're painting white on white, you want to go ahead and you want to tip your canvas and you can kind of see what's wet and what's not wet. I'm just going to fill the rest of this in. I'm going to make sure I fill in by his nostrils. I'm not going over his eye or her eye. And then I don't want to forget that ear that back ear right there. So like that. So if you were doing a brown horse, just in case, if you're doing black, you can use black. If you're doing gray, you mix black and white. But the brown, I wanna just make sure you guys got it just in case. So if I wanted to make brown, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my blue and some of my yellow. I'm only going to take a little because I'm just showing you guys, but you guys are going to want to take a little bit more than what I have. So you're going to make a green. So see how that's coming out green. And then what I'm going to do is once I have a green, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in red. So you're going to add those three colors until you find a brown that you like. And then once you have a brown that you like, if you want to darken it, you're going to go ahead 
and add just a little bit of black. So you'll be able to see down here. Oops. I don't need to add too much. So that made it a little bit darker. And if you want to lighten it, I'm going to clean this brush off nice and good. And if I wanted to lighten it, I would go ahead and I would dip some white and that's going to lighten that up. So that's how you're going to get the brown. So then because this is a unicorn, I want to think about what color I want her hair. And I'm thinking that I'm going to have mostly white, but I'm going to add some of that purple in there. So I'm going to make it super soft. So I added a little bit of that purple to my white. And so you can kind of see here. So I'm just filling that in with a nice soft purple. You guys can pick whatever color you want. Again, if you want pink, you're going to mix white and red. If you want a light blue, you're going to mix that blue with some white. And then I don't want to forget her bangs up here. around the unicorn horn. And I want to go right over my pencil mark there. I want to get this spot back here. And then if I wanted to, and you don't have to do this, but I like to sometimes, is to take that darker purple and then I'm just going to put a couple streaks in here. Just like that. And then I'm going to follow the shape of the bangs and do the same thing and go around the unicorn horn. Like that. Then I'm gonna rinse out this brush really well. And now a lot of this painting is wet, so I'm actually gonna put it down and I'm gonna let it dry for just a minute here so that I don't smudge anything. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, now that it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix myself just a smidge of pink. So I'm using a little bit of white and a little bit of red. I want it to be very, very light. So I'm gonna use way more white than I will red. I don't want it to be screaming out here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go inside just this ear. I'm not going to do the other ear because if we look at this, we are seeing the inside of this ear, but we're seeing the back of this ear. So I don't want to go inside that other ear. And I can rinse this off. And I'm going to go in and I'm gonna do just that little bit of the nostril right here. You can do the same thing if you're doing the horse, no matter what color you did the mane and no matter what color you did um, the actual horse body, you can still do pink for the inside of the ears. And then I'm gonna come back in here and I am gonna flip this around and I'm gonna decide what I wanna do with the horn. For this, I think I wanna stick with my pinks and purples. So I'm gonna mix just a little bit more pink. Again, not too dark. And 
And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to fill this in. And I think I'm going to do every other one. And then I might do purple on the other. And again, you guys can kind of decide what you want to do. I know a lot of kids that I work with love to do rainbows. They do rainbow manes and they do rainbow horns. So you guys do whatever you feel most comfortable doing. brush really good. Want to get it nice and dry again. And then I'm going to make some of that light purple again. I'm going to go on those in-betweens here. so far. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to rinse out that brush one more time. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on a little bit of an outline. So to do this, what I want to do is I want to mix a little bit of black and a little bit of white because I want a gray. And because I've got really soft colors in here, I want it to be a nice light gray. So you can decide how light you want it. I think I'm pretty happy with that right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here and the first thing that I'm going to give an outline to is I'm going to go right down the mane. And I'm finding my starting point and stopping point where I just drag that paint down. And every time I stop, I just lift it right up like that and then what I'm going to do right here so right where the neck is I'm going to come in just a little bit and I'm just going to give just that little bit gives them a little bit more of a cheek I'm going to come around now. Like that. And then we come back down here. The harder that I press with this brush, the wider my line is. If I get a look like this, where you can see there's like skip marks, you want to make sure you go back over it. And that's going to give you a nice finished line.
like that. And I'm going to go right where I drew his mouth, her mouth. Give her a little smile there. Go right around that nostril, which kind of looks like a little teardrop here. Like that. Then I'm going to turn this back around. I'm going to come up to the ear. And again, I want to be cautious of where my wet paint is. I'm going to do that back ear so that it doesn't get lost. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do that mane. Now remember, part of this mane goes behind the horn and part of it stays in front. So to do that, you stop your line right here, right when you come up to the horn. So it goes right here and then you come right in front and only do a partial line like that. That way it looks like it's coming right out of that mane. And we're still gonna give it a little outline right here. Like that. And then I'm going to do her eye. Now, again, my eye, I have it as closed. So, what I'm going to do here is give her a little eye like that, a little circle kind of at the bottom here. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her some eyelashes. So, the harder that I press with this, the wider my line is, the softer I press, the thinner my line is. So I'm gonna go right to the edge. I'm gonna push down just a little bit. I'm gonna pull up. And you can do just a couple little eyelashes here, just for fun. So you can do that. And then if you want to, you can outline the horn. Because I've got the colors that I have, I'm pretty content with it not being outlined. But if you want something to have more definition, you can definitely, definitely do that. So that's up to you. And then once you do that, you can kind of take a look at your painting and you can add anything else that you want to in the background. Um, you can change anything. If there's something that you're not sure of or you don't like, you can go ahead and kind of, kind of fix it a little bit. Like right here, I can tell I skipped a spot. So I want to go back in. And I just want to fix that real quick. There we go. So that's good. And then you're going to go ahead and make sure that you clean out those brushes, get them all dried off so that they're ready to go for the next painting.